Hi, this is Ryan from BetterTattooing.com, and today we're going to be talking about patch tests. Okay, now that that's over, you have to say, like, recording out in the garage, like, we live in a pretty busy part of town. That's really noisy out here, so I apologize if you're picking up that back noise, background noise. This is an ASMR. Anyways, what's past te patch test? Patch test is where we take pigment, insert it into the skin, apply it topically to see if you have an allergy to it before getting a tattoo done. How often are patch tests done? Not often enough, surprisingly enough. Um, I always try to do patch tests with people if they have any type of allergies or if they're planning on doing a lot of color tattoos in the future and they haven't gotten into it yet, right? It's just smart to do that. It only takes a few minutes to do it. And like, regardless of what's going on, even if the cost is gonna be, I do somewhere between 50 to $100, depending on the region for a patch test. Um, the initial investment in this stuff, I mean like, even past that, if you know what you can or can't have in your body, it's gonna save you a lot of problems in the future, especially if you're allergic to one of the pigments that are being used. So, what's a patch test? Pretty simple. Safe, sterile space, tattoo shop, everything's cleaned up, everything's fantastically ready to, uh, I guess, create some blood and art, right? Anyways, go get a drop cloth, dental bib, something like that, get a bunch of small ink caps, like such, for all of the different colors that you want to have done, or test for. Here's a look at the ingredients on the label. We'll try to find anything that has, you know, similar uh, ingredient uh, pigment wise or otherwise as something else and maybe try to <clears throat> not use them right we're trying to find unique aspects of each one of the pigments that are being used to ensure that like we're gonna have a, a guarantee that <laughs> each one of the pigments that are being used is gonna result in either an a, you know, allergy or no allergy so anyways pigment caps laid out with individual pigments dispersed into them small amounts you don't have to fill the ink caps right we're gonna take a needle bar do needle bars versus the, the cartridge type, I and mean, those are so expensive. Just getting a needle bar, it's sterile, they're cheap, it's the easiest way to do it as well. Get a bunch of needle bars, sterile needle bars, lay them out, each corresponding color, right? Uh, prep the skin uh, properly, whatever the guidelines or recommendations are from the health department in your area. Uh, where I'm at, it's, you know, alcohol, 70% USP. Um, or we'll use a product like HibaCleanse after that. Just make sure the skin's nice and clean. We're not gonna be introducing outside bacteria into a wound. What we'll do is we'll open up one of the uh, needles from the blister packs. Gloved hands, of course, please, PPE. Don't just be a, you know, an idiot and just whatever. Ugh, it's gross. Uh, what we're gonna do is take that from our ink caps that have been rinsed in alcohol before we fill them, please. And we're gonna take a small amount of that and we're gonna just inject it into someone's skin. We go to do it, stretch the skin, create a spot wherever that test spot is going to be. It's going to either be like in this, in the area of like where a tattoo is going to go regardless, so you can hide it in the background, um, or in a spot that's, you know, less visible and we don't have to worry about. Armpits are usually pretty good, but a little bit more difficult to uh, keep the topical application clean. Anyways, you take it, you're going to make a small dot, the excess ink that's run over that next to it. You're going to create a little swipe. Don't break the skin, right? Just apply a little bit of pigment onto the skin in a single line in that area. We're gonna go through each one of these until all of them are done, right? So you'll have what looks like a whole bunch of eyes next to each other, right? Once that's done, because we live in a world where digital uh, things are just at our fingertips, take a picture of the area. Now we have a reference of what colors are where and you're gonna cover that area uh, up so people can leave. Wait about four hours, as much as 24, uncover it, wash it, and see if there's any issues with any of the pigments that are on there. If when they leave, they start to feel something pretty quickly, like within the first 15 to 20 minutes, you'll be able to isolate which one is causing an issue based on swelling, redness, radiation, or where they feel like it's not feeling very good. And uh, usually by wiping it off, you'll see, on average, there'll be like a little bit of bumps or raising around an area, maybe, right? There's a difference. If you see something that is on the lines, this is topical application, this is probably going to be an issue with one of the additives in the pigment. It could be a surfactant, it could be a mixer, it could be some other type of thing in that carrier fluid that the person's allergic to. So you know that like maybe that brand isn't good, but maybe still, especially if the insertion model on that, uh, the insertion point of that tattoo is not modeling an allergic response, that maybe the pigment's still good, right? If you see both, 
the insertion plus the wipe is resulting in a raised area on the skin. There may be a sensitivity or allergy to it. It's best just to avoid it, right? This is where we want confirmation as well. If you have two colors, there's two blues, use the same type of CI on there and like they both are raised, but one is not, you know, from the insertion, it's only topical. The other one may be like this. Look at what the difference in the uh, chemicals are, or the uh, pigment products are inside there. Look at the different additives, see if they're all congruent. Uh, and if there's two different uh, pigments that have been mixed, you'll have to figure out which one of those are gonna be allergic to before you do it. Uh, why do we do small dots? Instead of just grabbing a tattoo machine and ripping through their skin. Simple, if they're allergic to it, the more pigment we put in, the worse it's gonna be for them and the harder it is to remove. The easiest and safest way to remove uh, that allergen is to like literally remove it. So we do a small dot on the skin. We'll just take a biopsy punch and just take it out the skin. Less chance of there being a really nasty scar and we don't have to possibly like excise an entire section of the skin out. Um, I, I would recommend everyone get a patch test depending on getting tattoos. It's just, it's just smart, right? Make sure when you do your patch test, we should have some type of form, piece of paper that we give the clients afterwards that's going to have at least the color index, lot numbers, dyes, types of pigments, etc. scrubbed out on it, and which ones you know that you may be allergic to or not. A simple checklist. You can go on Excel and create one of these. It's really, really simple. And just do that, right? That way they know if they're going forward and they don't go to see you for a tattoo again, they can still have a pretty good idea about what may or may not work for them personally, right? So that's it. What's a patch test? Making sure you're not going to be allergic to pigment. Hey, this is Ryan from BetterTattooing.com signing off. Thank you.